Welcome, 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 you guys. Thank y'all for joining us. It's me, Tony the Kid. This is Re the Reject Rundown. I am with my co-host, my brother from the same mother, Zach the Mac. Say what's up, Zach the Mac. Yeah, you know the vibe we all here. It's the, it's the bro attack. It's the bro attack. That's what it is. That's right. That's right. We're talking about a really serious show, man. We're about to get, we're about to break it down, man. You know, you know, my brother get into a lot of, you know, very selective anime. So, yes, very break true. It down, man. Break it down for me. Exactly. I think with last time we were both together, we did the we did the review on WandaVision. Now we're about to do the review on Invincible, you guys. Amazon original. Mm. It is. We want to jump before we start off anything. Season finale was just recently just popped on with, with episode eight on there. Um, it is confirmed that Invis Invincible is coming back for seasons two and three, and we'll kind of go from there to see what happens with that. But before we jump into that, Zach the Mac, your thoughts on the season finale, my brother? What did you feel about that one? Because no lie, it was a pretty bloody ass mess. But what did you think about it? I'm gonna tell you one thing. Um, I really wanted to get a special guest for this one too, man, because my guy Karen watched it, and mm -hmm. I literally, I kind of called it, man. Mm -hmm. I told him that I said, I said that the dad, his race is a different, it's a different race. I yeah. said his planet and the, when the people that 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 the race, what what is, what is the name of the race again? Exactly? Uh, I got it down here. Let me read it real quick. Uh, I wrote down it here real Ooh. fast. Viltrumite. It's a Viltrumite. The what? A Viltrumite. Yeah, Viltrumite. I'm telling you. I called it. I said the Viltrumites are they're they're not they're not your necessarily hero planet, man. Right. I I called it. I, I felt this vibe, man. He had this vibe. The dad always had this vibe where he was always like, "I'm here as a hero." But when you when you you know if you've seen it, like I said, all spoilers. You know, if you've seen it, you know you always got this vibe that he was not telling the complete truth. Right. So with that being said, if you guys watch the show, man. I, I just knew it, man. I knew his, I knew his plan, bro, he was about to fucking kill his son. Like, yep. I knew the last episode, I just knew, like, I knew they were in a fight, but obviously the show is that intense because you didn't think it would get that tense of a fight, you know? Exactly. If, if you were gonna see, if you saw the fight, yeah, if you saw the fight, you know, he kicks the shit out of his own son, man. He beats the living crap out of him. Yes. And it, it, it's intense. It, it, it's so intense for anime that you really, think about it like wow you haven't seen that 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 bad of an ass beating in, in a while and um <laughs> he took a whole you know, old school he, <laughs> he took an old school 90s ass whooping to a whole nother level of ass whooping to your child like it was a whole nother level 100 percent, man you know, and i mean me me and the kid come from the same grounds man. right you know you know what I mean when you see one. So, yep. you know, it, it's intense. It's it's definitely intense. And I didn't think that, I'll tell you what I didn't think. And I, I was put on. Actually, I wish David was here. David could have been another guest. Uh, David actually, he was one of the first people to tell me about the shows. Gotcha. And I was like, eh, I'll think about it. Right. And then another friend told me, and then yourself, Tony, you were like, yep. no, you got to check it out. And I yep. watched it. And I freaking binge watched about three episodes. Right. And I got caught up, and then I was up to date with everything. Yep. Yeah, I watched the season finale, man. What do you uh, What do you think about the season finale? What do you think? Uh, same thing, man. It was intense. That that fight scene between him and uh, the dad and the son, crazy. What Invincible and uh, Omni Man is what they call his name. They call the dad yeah. name. Um, it, it was intense. I, I actually was. I kind of like you said. I kind of called it as far as this this version of this version of the Superman and this version of this verse. He's an evil one, yeah, he's obviously. Kind of like a Superman, right? Exactly. Kind of like a, yeah. In the crypt, yeah. like Krypton, yeah. of course. Like he said, it wasn't the the race isn't dead. They're alive. They're well. They're they're the conquerors of the whole galaxy. They're the most powerful. Da 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 da. And that's what he was coming in there for. It's kind of like a twist to where um when you saw Guardians of the Galaxy two, and the dad was telling Chris Pat. I'm actually I'm trying to take over the whole universe and stuff like that. So very good it's point. very good point. It's very similar to that, and it was I thought that was pretty much what was going to happen. Very shocked to see that you know that ass whooping coming from the dad whooping on the son. But you also got to see the meaning behind the dad, like not realizing like yeah. you know what this is a bad move to kill my own son. You know I, throughout these years, obviously it wasn't for nothing. I started gaining these feelings that I never felt before that even through my training told me not to feel these things. My time spending here on this planet now created this feeling. So I got to dip out and run because now I feel like it's changing me. So in turn, makes him leave. Fair shockingly. 
I think the big question is, uh, when will he come back? Will he come back right away for season episode two? Or season two, I mean? Or will he come for season three and be heard of with, throughout the season two? You know what I mean? I think that's a big, that's a good question. Um, yeah. I love, I love the fact that you kind of get to see Invincible gaining back his perspective of why he wants to be a superhero and wanted to continue on with the name, with Invincible and kind of prove, prove the world wrong that, you know, Viltrumite cannot just be evil itself. So I think that's what the whole main of the story is. But uh, season yeah. finale, it was, it was crazy. It was hectic. Awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, badass. So I, think, badass. I, I think I agree with you, man. I think I agree with you with him with him being with him being a coming to a realization with uh with with like with realizing like you know he's he's like you know he's being the crap out of his son and he, he stops you know and it's he, he and right there and I think it's the whole Earth aspect you know like yeah. his son trying to make him realize that Earth itself Earth is a beautiful you Planet. know while we're here on the show live bro shout out to Earth. Yeah. Know, right? you know <laughs> it makes you realize you can see it in him i really love the animation in the cartoon because yeah. it has a very old school in that scene he's yeah. going through emotions when mm-hmm. you see it for an animation it's very emotional and um yeah he's like really you can tell he, it's an earth aspect if you freaking live on earth if you're not an alien get off this podcast because if you live on earth you know <laughs> you, you deal with real emotions and you can't, you can't just beat the crap out of somebody like that, man. You can't do it without no, you know, regulation. So, yeah, exactly. And in his point, it's his own mind, and, and and he's a freaking alien himself. Where right. they come from this planet, where they can, they can devour planets. And, right. Uh, I think his son. I think his son comes Mama. from. A, yeah, but I think his son <laughs> comes from a point of view where he just. He, he he understands that he he understands that this is his planet. He can't be, you know, this he can't be disowning them, and he's not going to just let them die. Right. And I really respect the fact that the other. I mean, I don't know if we're going to jump into that aspect, but the um, I don't know the the, the team, the other team that they obviously save him at the end of the episode. You know, they come yep. and rescue him. Right. I think that they are obviously they're obviously they're going to accept them into the team. I think obviously going to the second season, if we're going to go right into it, they got to bring them right into that team. He's got to help them, you know, I don't know, find himself and maybe even fight the dad. That's yeah. what I think. I think they got to fight the dad. Um, <clears throat> they got to do that because, the, and that was my thing when they, when freaking, when they started fighting, I mean, you knew they were going to fight. Me and me and you were, we talked about it going into the last episode. Yeah. Me and, me and Tony talked about it going to the last episode where oh, they're always going to fight. Yep. Um, I think I, I think that we didn't think he was going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> not like that. Not like that at all. I mean, that dude was being tossed <laughs> so, around like a rag doll, going from whoa. one from Mount Everest to freaking about, uh, the train scene. The train scene. Just oh my the god. Yeah, holding it, holding exactly. Yes, holding his head as the train was going through, yeah. and freaking the um, like invincible, watching the dead bodies die just because of what he was like, just himself, just his body just being Absolutely. there, and like that. No Absolutely. lie, dude, that's a big traumatic thing to go in your head. Like just these bodies flying and blood all over your face, your blood, like you're just drenched yeah. with their blood. Like that is crazy. Now, to get really alienated, though, like, you got to think about the fight scene, though, because the dad is trying to realize that that Earth is like, you know, like, like nothing. In, yeah. In the dad's point of view, yep. the Earth is like, is like, it's like a, a insect that is not necessary to worry about. Yeah. And it's crazy because the son is just like taking his ass beating. He's like, I don't, you can be my ass all you want. But. And, and you can you can see the frustration because he's like I can yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> gonna literally yeah, whoop he's, your he's, ass it's very interesting. but you're la- but, he's like I can but it's like I'm not yeah yeah it's very interesting yeah I think that was one of the crazy parts of the scenes uh of the of that last season finale was just that particular scene right there like what kind of crap is that you're going through the whole train itself and like he's still sitting there and telling him like it's this just because you think these people are like insects and they can be crushed easily. That's the beauty of them. Like they're so fragile. We're so fragile that it's, yeah. it's a certain amount of care that it takes from us to take care of our own selves, but also what makes us so awesome that we lasted this long. You know what I mean? Like 
how is it that how is it true? So I think that's one crazy. That's just a crazy aspect to kind of think about. And that, it was one of the tenth, one of the yeah. ten scenes, one of the ten scenes of the show for sure. The show in general, one of the most of ten scenes. That, but, if we're gonna go over the whole season of that, I would put in the top ten uh, when uh, Invincible gets his uh, self beat up by the lioness guy. Well, that's yeah, yeah. We'll kind of we'll kind of dive into that a little bit later. I wanted this one first part. We're gonna okay. talk about season finale, but yes. Oh, we're okay. definitely getting to exactly. that for sure. Right. So, well, right. yeah. Then other than that, we'll dive in. We're gonna dive in next, real quick. We're going to the characters. Let's dive into the characters after the season finale right. talk. So, diving into the characters. Of course, we have Omni Man being Nolan. He's the Venture Mike, evil version of Superman. Basically, you can kind of say Invincible. Would you consider him evil man? Evil man, Superman now. You could, but just because of how powerful he is, he's the strongest superhero of all the whole group. Which technically is Superman. The only difference is he can't shoot razor, laser beams out of his freaking eyes. And he can't you know, blow for cold or whatever, what have you. So that's why you kind of see he's the evil version of Superman. I see. Okay. I see. He's just, yeah. Okay. He's the almighty being. In the sense, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The almighty being. And no one can beat him type of thing like that. So that's why. Uh, Invincible, of course. I think Invincible... Was it's a cool kid to kind of follow. Like he's kind of like any like a regular teenage guy. Like if uh, any of us teenagers were, if we were watching this back then during high school, like we would really be bad. Like following this dude, like really cool. You know what I mean? Like that would have been dope. So he's cool. Oh yeah. Uh, Cecil Stedman. He was the U.S. agent. He's basically the Nick Fury of the franchise. Not pretty dope. Pretty dope. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy hillbilly. Uh, Eve will. Right, exactly. Eve Wilkins, Adam Eve, she's kind of like a, a pink female version of Green Lantern. Like a rogue of the X-Men. I would yeah, say. exactly. Mm. That too. Yeah, right. That's what, that's what, that's what, that was my comparison. But yeah. Okay, okay, that's good comparison. Good comparison. No doubt. But uh, other than that, I think, I guess you would say, well, real quick before we go off to her, like, do you think for next season is Invincible and Hurricane kind of, are they going to knock boots? Oh, 100%, man. You think so? I okay. think that I think that uh, <clears throat> I think that she, I think that she needs a better option than his girlfriend now. I respect the relationship that him and his girl have now. <clears throat> yeah, but um, I don't think she's very understanding because I really like the I really like the outside aspect of the um, uh, the uh, I guess you would say the non hero part of it. Yeah, because he is trying to maintain a, a relationship with a non heroic girl. Right. Um, and I think that she's, and I think that's going to become a problem because she's obviously she's not going to be very understanding. Right. Um. Now she will. Obviously, she knows. I mean, if you've seen, you know, the episode, she knows that 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 she's a superhero. The uh, the redhead. She knows. Everyone knows Invincibles. You know, and you know who he is. They know the dad is missing. So. She's, I mean, obviously she's going to become a supporting character, right. I think, but uh, I think that obviously that relationship's not going to last very long, and I do think that that Invincible and uh, her are going to hook up, you know, right. at least, or become a, you know, become a thing at least. Yes. Know? They got to, I think. And obviously that's going to become a problem with, uh, what's his name, uh, Rob, what's his name, Rocket? Is it Rocket? Or something like that, right? It's something? Are you talking about the guy yeah, that throws the rocket guy. bombs? The ex-boyfriend? Is it Rex? Yeah, isn't it Rocket or he's No, his name, his name his name I was actually gonna the next character to talk about Rex Explode is his name. Rex Explode. Explode, yeah. Rex Explode. Yeah. And I think it's gonna cause a problem with Explode though, because yeah. So I can see that. So cause moving I mean, on to that, like because yeah. moving on yeah. to that, uh we found out Rex Explode himself was kinda like the hot you know, the fireball guy, whatever the group, the, the talk right. the shit That's talker. Okay. You know. Um yeah. he had obviously we found out he had sex with duplicate, so which in turn, just because he thought Eve was cheating on him with the Invincible Mark, and now I, I guess like you said, it could be a, um, uh, a get back at him, and so that's what makes me in terms of why she may end up doing something with Invincible, even though maybe her and Rex are starting to get back together, possibly. Oh, we don't know. I didn't, I didn't even think about it as a get back. I thought about it more as just, I think it more of as Invincible. He's gonna fall for her more. Yeah. Okay. And then it just so happens, <clears throat> it just so happens that you know he's gonna get mad that uh, that Rex is gonna get mad about it. Got you. Um, a little you know more. 
Not more of a get back. It just, you know what I'm saying? Just more yeah. kind of, you know, slippery slope type of thing. So gotcha. that's a good point, though. It, gotcha. She might do it, though. She might do it as a get back. So mm-hmm. that's a very good point. Very mm-hmm. good point, though. Because it's, it's, I think I, you can kind of tell Invincible was feeling her, especially when they were being superheroes, heroines together. And like, you can kind of see the chemistry that they had together. So that's why I think you're on a good point when it comes to season two could give us that, you know, love thing, triangle thing going on there for him and her. And it could be very kind of interesting in general. So yeah, I like that. Uh, otherwise, the next character we had was Robot, who was kind of like, pretty much like Ultron. Of the group, very cool. Oh yeah, Ultron. Okay, yep. but a good, oh, but the good version of Ultron. I had, I had no comparison. I had no comparison. Oh really? Ultron, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, a good I comparison to Ultron on that one. So he turns into a little boy, gives himself a little humanoid action there, um, and then obviously he falls in love with Mo- Monster Girl, who really is Monster Man, just because of the monster itself is a grown man. <laughs> Only you, only you. Was- <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah, monster, uh, uh, that monster thing. I yeah, guess. like it's, it's weird. Like, it's a girl. It's a monster girl. Don't be sexist, right? No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's be feminist you now. It's but I it's mean, a monster lady. <laughs> but I guess it's <laughs> but it's it's gonna be it interesting to see. Is, yeah. I just love I, one yeah. thing. That's why I kind of see it with this show. They did a lot of. They did a lot of cohesion when it came to they added some Marvel, they added some DC, and they just kind of made their own. Oh yeah, you know their own it's versions. It's yeah. Beautiful, I love it. The aspect of her character in general is very interesting. It's very yeah. beautiful. She actually like loses uh, ages, right? When she turns exactly into the beast, right? correct. So it's like so the Benjamin it Benjamin Button effect. She gets younger. Yeah, 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 in a sense, in a sense. So, and the fact that you compared. Uh, her the guy that she's like uh, in their relationship to Ultron is a very good point though. It's like it was kind of like if Ultron made himself successfully a human, right? Right. Just it's for her, like that sense, right? So yep. that is a very good comparison. And, um, I don't, yeah, with him, he's a very interesting character. Um, if you notice the actual last episode, yeah, he's able to go back into the robot. Yeah, you've seen that, right? Like he's really use that, like an Iron Man thing. So he goes in it, like that's his iron suit or whatever, and then he fights off what he needs to do. Yeah. So yeah, so I thought that was interesting because I was worried. That was my worries when he became a human, right? Um, if he was able to still access that, so obviously he's able to do that. Yeah, and I think that's very essential because yeah. uh, honestly, maybe I can see himself just going back to a robot because I don't really know about the character Mons. Is it Monster Girl, right? Yeah, I don't know, Monster Girl because I. Interesting. If you you think about it, she's also transforming in training, bro. She's transforming. Yeah. And, and any mission, and she's only getting younger, so it's that could be a sad, a real uh, quick let, yeah, a sad let go in the show and next, maybe even season two. I could right see. off the so, bat, yeah, you know, definitely could see it. Spoilers, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, and it's really. interesting. I mean, like, I like the team. I like the team setup. It's like a Teen Titans type of thing, like that, with a little bit of mesh of stuff, yeah. or whatever. And it's it, it all in all, it was it's a good combination. We got the we got the the freaking Justice League version, and I got the ass beat yeah. by Omni Man. Before we move wow. on to the next character, on him, that though. was character. Real quick question on him though: Do you not get an evil aspect him though as, of who? A, as a leader though of robot uh, of the ro- yeah. yes? No lie, when he was trying to, when he basically that time frame when he was convincing himself to go into the uh, humanoid yeah. version. That whole two episode thing there, it was weird, like suspiciously. I felt like he was turning evil, like yeah, Ultron. Don't you still get evil? Like, okay, now I, I get him because he was doing it to try and become human, right? But even even after, now keep in mind those characters, the twins, they got like arrested and everything like that. But right. like, you have this. Now you got to think about how the team was built. They were built from like their outskirts of what they know. Mm-hmm. So it's like they all have this background that we don't know of. You know, you got to keep that yes, in mind. Yes, so, true. If, you, if we already get this evil, I'm glad, yeah. So, you picked the mind too. He's definitely got this shysty kind Intention. of like, you, know, you know how to do this and this. Yeah. Right. And then evil they chose you to do it later. So, yeah. I say watch out for that too. Because now you got to think about it. It's kind of like a multiple personality. He can control the robot and then be with the team type of thing. So, yes. you got to keep it too. Very true. Yeah. Very true. And then we also got Black Samson. Black Samson was the, the uh, leader of that group. Uh, now my question about Black Samson though, 
<laughs> yeah. But, but, but it was weird. But my question, what the hell was his power of being in the group? You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So allegedly, so allegedly, uh, he had powers. He was part of the first um, group of teams. Allegedly. Okay. Um, but he, he didn't make like the final, final cut. Yeah. And then when they all died, he heard about it. And then he tried out for this team, but he didn't have powers. Okay. It, it, I mean, I, I could be wrong too, but I think that's my understanding. And he didn't have powers. And then when he got, uh, the, the crab beat out of him. Right. By the, the, when they got attacked in that room, allegedly his powers were reborn. Right. And he's like a black lightning type of thing. Like he controls electrical currents type of thing. So right. that's, I guess that's just kind of, I guess it's his backstory, which is very fishy too. But I guess we have to stay in soon that he has powers now, right? Yeah. yeah and that's know. the thing. It's kind of like, what kind of powers does he have? Because I think, like you said, when he did get beat the bejesus out of him, um, yeah. that big old, when they were trying to revive him, it was like a big warm, like light coming out of him. And then he ends up. Yeah. Healing himself, so it's like, what the hell happened? I just don't. So be, just because of I don't know the story, I'm so intrigued of what the hell happened with the guy. Yeah, so, and I don't think I think it was confusing for a lot of people, but I, I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I can see how it's confusing, but I feel like I got to get gas a bit. Okay, because he uh, yeah, just allegedly because he knew about the blood stain on the wall. He was like, yeah, that was that was you know what I'm saying he knew about that, and and so did the uh, like the guy that brought the team together. Right. I forget his name, but yeah. Um, he, they both knew about it, and then when he was, remember when Rex was trying to clean it off, he was like, "Like, what are you doing?" You know what I'm saying? Right. And like him and Rex were about to fight, and he's like, "Nah, man, like we're a team type of thing." So it's like, I guess that is kind of fishy because you know it is you you, you half hours and you don't, and then like you get the like it's kind of like the opposite of what happened to Hawk. Like Hawk got beat up and then lost his powers. This guy gets beat up and then gains his powers back. Like, yeah. You know? So uh, <laughs> that's interesting. And, and I guess it's. Overall, we don't even know his. I guess obviously they got to explore that, right? I guess it's probably season two, but he has electrical. It's it's an electrical current thing. I think that's why I said black lightning. I think he's kind of like a freaking black lightning of the group. He's got to be some electrical current guy that has because he had a suit. His suit's obviously going to be upgraded. So right, he's a very interesting guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's I think that's going to be. He might even be leader. He might even be leader. I guess not. It seems like he is the leader of the group next to robot. Oh, almost right. Almost. Yeah. So it's kind of going to be a nice, I don't know, it's going to be a nice little story to kind of figure out where he comes from season two and kind of see how that develops a little bit more. So I'm looking into that one. Now, they also we had, we also had a returning guy after supposedly dying in the first episode, uh, the immortal, who in my, in my opinion, when they, when they brought him back to life and when they talked about that, glimpse of his story it seemed like a whole vandal savage thing where he was an ancient you know uh caveman got this weird power then started just basically reliving and continue on his whole life for decades and becoming this warrior and having strength and da, 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 being able to die but then come back to life like he can't die either type of thing like that so it's, it's very interesting to see what you know what really makes him come back and since at the end of this episode of what we saw the season finale is that the freaking uh, Cecil is he has the team working on him of bringing it back to life. Oh yeah, cool. So what? Yeah. My, the good thing is the question would be is what's going to happen with him in season two and three, where he's going to lie up in that. I think that I think that Cecil. Thank you for reminding me. I think that Cecil is trying to obviously create. Um, he's trying to create. I think he's going to recreate another defensive team. Yeah. Um, again, I think that he's gonna have him be the anchor. Yeah, he's gonna yep. have him be the anchor. Yeah, he's gonna have him be the anchor of it. Um, yeah, that is actually very interesting, though. That that was that was my only real big scratch in my head is the fact that he was putting Cecil was putting him back together at the end of the episode. Yep. So you definitely gotta if you guys if you got and fans listen if you're a fan of the freaking show you gotta watch every freaking second. Yeah. I was like, wow. Oh, so yeah, there was a couple of things. I was like, damn. Yep. You gotta watch out. So if, if he puts him back together, that was my big scratch heads. I think he's gotta. If I had to answer a goal of it, he's gotta be putting a small team back together. Or, uh, I, oh man, 
it's interesting. I yeah, know. it's kind of like, like you get you get left yeah. with many questions. I know, I know. Of course, they yeah. have the comics already out, but it's like I'm already just more intrigued with the show. I want to see where this goes. I don't want to read the I comics. I want to see just where this yeah. goes. It's gonna be interesting. Um, then you also had Damien yeah, I mean, Dark Blood. This is all. This is all from. Uh, this is all from. Yeah, for the fans listening, this is all from uh, fans. You know, watching point of view. We don't. Yeah, you know, I don't read all that. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> no, we also had that. Uh, the Hellboy looking guy, Damien Dark Blood. Uh, basically a detective for that. I'm pretty sure he's gonna make a comeback in season two and three. Oh yeah. So I'm sure he'll be making his, you know. Hey, Mendo, uh, if we, I think if I had to guess your next guest, ha ha ha, jokes. Uh, but um, but um, he's it, the the wife. Him and him and the wife are definitely gonna come in cool hoots in the next yeah season, bro. Cause right. That, yeah. I feel like they're gonna his work wife, together quite a bit. People. Mm-hmm. Cause I like he obviously it. got banished from the case, but he's obviously still in the house. He's in the freaking house. I don't know how Mr. Superman of this universe doesn't freaking notice a ghost in your house. That's true. <laughs> he's in the freaking closet. <laughs> right. That's very true. That's very true. It's intriguing to kind of see what's up with that guy. Like, how is he so incognito and just dips and runs and comes and goes type of thing like that? So it's interesting. Well, but. Uh, I liked, I liked, I was okay with that. Like, it's pretty cool to see a detective, oh, yes. but also be, it being Hellboy. So I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Why not? Whatever. Yeah, I like the character of him. I like the fact that somebody else, I like the fact that they bring in a realm of that, like a realm of like chaos and like death and like alive. Like, these things have to be dealt with. Like, that's where he's coming from is like, you know, either way you're a superhero or a villain, you cause death. Right. And hell, you know what I'm saying? Like, hell is looking for you. Like, you have to go to the underworld type of thing. So, exactly. I like that aspect because I think it will become relevant in the next freaking, you know, if they're bringing in monsters like the, the, the one that Invincible and his dad fought. That right. That was monsters like that only. <laughs> <laughs> for real. And then we also had, uh, last, last character I want to talk about, uh, Titan. Basically, Luke Cage. New Kingpin. The new yeah. Kingpin of the group. I know he's going to be a, a, a figure that they're going to look into. They're going to have Invincible and him go at it a few times and stuff like that. I think he's going to be the evil um, partner to Invincible a little bit there. Kind of they'll work with each other here and there type of thing like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what he what he does in season two, season two and three to see where he comes from. You, you just you should call him the Luke Kang of it? Luke Cage. Oh, okay, Luke Cage. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, I guess, yeah. Like, he's imperious. Yeah, I see that, yeah. He's imperious to things and what have you. So, yeah, it's kind of like a Luke Cage. And, and the fact that he turned the new Kingpin, it just gives me more of a Luke Cage vibe just because of uh, at the end of the season, I forgot, season three of the Netflix series, Luke Cage ends up yeah. becoming the new Kingpin. So, it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what he's, I mean? He's, yeah, they're definitely going to come back into. Uh, he's definitely going to come back to relevancy. Yeah, right, definitely. So it's a treat. I, like, I really like his character. I like his yeah. character. He's underrated because uh, he, he kind of played. He kind of played invinci- invincible. I mean, not only kind of, he did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he, really did, he but, played yeah. invincible yeah. to the T. Like no doubt, got what he wanted, got what he needed, and ended up just taking it from there. And left yeah. oh, left invincible for dead. Check it. We gotta talk about we gotta talk about one more character, bro. We gotta talk about the freaking Seth Rogen in the show, man. All oh, right, man. that's right. The one eye, the one eye police officer. That's right. Yeah, bro. The guy, the guy that comes to fight him on the moon, and then he comes back at the end of the episode, and he's like, bro. You have a freaking. <laughs> he's like, you got somebody. Like, he's talking about his dad. He's like, yeah, dad. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, like, so, man. This I play- like, though, I feel like that race right there, though. Um, I feel like they'll pop up again, man. Yes, I feel like they'll come back again because him and him and Invincible are not like they're not. They fought obviously, and they're um. I mean, he's not a weak character. Right. He's just obviously a, a, a. He's a out of this world character, worldly character, which I think there you that go. um. Invincible could uh, use him to his advantage. Type yes. Of thing. So, um, I think that shout out to um, shout out to him, man. That we're gonna talk about characters. I think he'll be back, man. Oh, well, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely be back. Very shocked to hear his voice be as um, as Seth Rogen playing that uh, playing that voice character in general. Like it's that's a good character for him to voice, and uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it kind of plays well. It kind of gives me the whole, yeah. the more uh, serious version of 
where he played the blob in Monsters vs. Aliens. So it's like, you know, you get a little mixture in that. You know? I like it. Yeah. I like it. Pretty cool. So I'm going to be yeah. excited to see where he comes out in season two or three. I feel like him and Invincible are going to be like best of friends and have a good relationship with each other. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah, exactly. Really cool to see. I feel like Invincible, you know, I feel like he, he's got to come at a recovery point. So, yeah. Right. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the overall storyline. Let's just few some in points about the, within the season. Um, I guess my question is, did the success of this show have anything to do with the raw, unfiltered scenes? Zach the Mac, what do you think about that one? Yeah, bro. Oh my god. Completely, man. Definitely. A hundred percent. If you're I think if you're any fan of an anime you want to watch something action packed. Right. Uh I mean, let alone bloody and gory. Right. So definitely, you want to see something that 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 keeps you in contact. I put it that way. Yeah. So I I think that the I think the impact because I never read any other comics. I did hear about the comics. I've heard about it. I heard about the character Clark Invincible. I heard about the team that the uh, the dad was in. And um, no spoilers, you know. But I heard about not like the aftermath, but I heard that Invincible was freaking. He's about to be on some boss stuff yep. after the second season, you know. So, with that being said, after I heard about it, I was like, maybe I'll check out the first season. I just did not think that it would be as, you know, well, well uh, drawn. But right. anyway, the bloody, it's amazing. <laughs> you know me, I'm a gory kind of guy, so it's, it's yeah. beautiful. It's definitely contact. I think the fact that they in, intended to make it as impactful in the, uh, you know, the writing and, and drawing aspect, it makes it definitely more beautiful. Yes. Agreed. Very true. So other than that, uh, next question. What was the biggest shocker to you this season? Like what, watching the whole season itself, what other scenes was the biggest shocker? Uh, I would have to say, damn. Yeah. Biggest shocker. I probably have to say the fact that... <sighs> The fact that uh, the fact that they got rid of the what what we what we be the investigator right the the Hellboy kind of guy right? correct yep the, I think that the fact that like because he knew and him and uh oh my god I keep just seesaw him and seesaw knew that uh the dad killed the what are they mold mold moldarites what are they <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> oh the Omni Man no the, 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 yeah. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Cecil and the Hellboy guy. Cecil, I mean, the fact that they knew oh, okay, that yeah. Ultraman killed, killed the, what the team name is, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, you're talking about Justice, the, the, their version of the Justice League. Yeah, the okay. name of it. I don't know the name. I'm trying to say the name of it, yeah. Their gotcha. version of the Justice League, though. They, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? In, in, in the scene when it happens that Seesaw and him know that, uh, you know, he killed them, the fact that Seesaw turns on him and he's like, yeah, man, we got to send you, you know, we got to get you out of here. We got to send you back to hell because you can't invade on me figuring out the real right. truth. And and that was the biggest process to me because it's like, why would you send him away? He saw like he, he, I feel like he's one of the only people that can, not alone him and Invincible Man that can stop, you right. know, him in, in, in the end of it all. And I think that was very interesting for them to send him away. If I had yeah. to say most shocker. Right. Um, that that, and on top of the ass beating that Invincible got. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of that, I think that that was actually going to lead into my my perspective. That's exactly where I was going with that, big man. Because yeah. that right there, yeah. out of the whole series, was the most shocking mm. thing that I saw ever. The ass beating that Invincible got. Yeah. Not even not even just Invincible. It was episode five. And it was the, like we said, it was talked about earlier. Like we, it was Invincible and Titan teaming up, Titan asking for help or whatnot to be to take over the throne and kill the Black Mask of their franchise and stuff like that and beat him up or whatnot. And then all of a sudden, he fights. He fights. What's his face? Uh, Battle Beast, which is the cat guy's name. Battle Beast. Yeah. Gets his ass beat by him. Black Mason goes in for the punch. Black Mason yeah. Samson's arm breaks off, throws the body like a rag doll against the wall. Monster Girl comes in, tries to give him a one-two. Beast Battle Beast says, "Oh hell no!" Throws him down, grabs two pieces of rock, and just smashes the head in. 
you see the skull <laughs> of Monster Girl, and then you see, and then you see Invincible just there lying dead after being fucking struck by his freaking staff, and he's all like, "Man, I thought there was competition. I'm out." And everybody's just left in a bloody guts in pain. Like, that right there was the most shocking thing out of the whole series. The most shocking thing. Bro, he, he smacked him with the hammer on his stomach. Yes. And then, and then, and then he literally, the, the thing about the scene is he pulls, he pulls the dead body that he killed. And he, he lays around, he was like, this guy is below me. Right. <laughs> Bro, he's brutal. He's he's cutthroat. That's crazy, man. Yes. That that is wild to me. You're right. That 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 is one of those. Yeah, you didn't think it. You didn't think the way the way that scene goes. I didn't. I don't think nobody expected it to be that freaking like you imagine like a plot twist to you know you're gonna find it out. But I don't know, man. That guy. That guy was. That guy was a dog. I yeah. think he hit the end of that whole series if he didn't. <laughs> I know that they, I thought it would have ended there. I'm over here like freaking out, like what are you gonna do with this guy now? Like he's gonna die. But then I'm like, when I talked about like the Omni Man saying that he can never die, so then that's when I'm like, oh, okay, so then he's gonna come back to life. It's gonna take him a while to get turn into life. But then I'm thinking to myself and, like and the crazy part about the scene, the crazy part about the scene is Vince Man is outside the building watching his son. Yeah, that you saw that right? Like he's that's just standing funny. there floating, yeah. just watching, like not helping. Yeah. yeah, like that's the crazy part. That's what I'm saying. So it's it's the whole scene. It's wild. It, it, it's intense, bro. Like that. That was what threw me off. So I'm like, obviously, like he's gonna come in and nothing. Yeah, <laughs> nada. <laughs> Just nothing. Like, nothing. So like, what the hell? So I'm like, I'm kind of confused about that. But I mean, other than that, that's that was the craziest part of the series. I mean, because I mean, throughout the series, you got like you know pretty cool story, like you know fights that Invincible went against, but. All in all, shocking wise, that was the most shocking episode five. That was a freaking killer. Uh, yeah. And then episode eight kind of lets it all off with that. But I mean, that was a killer. That was his first ass beating he got, and it was intense. And the fact that he gets another yeah. one like this, oh jeez. Oh the- man, he's. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think the show they want you to be like, yeah, Vince Man's coming back, coming back. But it's like, man, you, you Which is, come back better be glorious at this point. <laughs> but I mean, that it, I guess that in terms of the, his name, Invincible, like this dude just gets yeah. keeps getting his ass beat and he keeps coming back. Like, damn. That's true. That's like, it's point. crazy. It's really crazy. Now, uh, other than that, you excited for season two and three? Oh, okay. Yeah. Excitement level? I'm definitely excited, man. I'm so excited. Anthony, you know I'm a reader. Right. I might even go and read the freaking comic books on it because I never thought the show would be that interesting. Right. I, like I said, I've been, I was told about uh, the show. I didn't even know about it. And right. And the fact that I've seen it, I, I'm more of a, yeah, I'm more of a reader. So I definitely, I'm, I'm willing to read the freaking comic books. That's how interested I am. Definitely am. Yep. I'm excited for season two and three. I know. Show gonna be intense definitely gonna be intense season two or three i think just because of me i think just because of me not knowing the storyline of its uh, of the whole entity itself i'm just really exactly. more excited to kind of see what's entitled for season two and three and the fact that i see it as like i like how they involve in this series that it's a mixture of marvel mixture of dc mixture of Watchmen, and it's like you're involving these, you know, these different entities and putting in one and giving a different your, your own twist to a character, different powers or whatever, kind of adjusting it a little bit, and it's and it's making it more exciting for me to watch it. It's intriguing and it's a really dope series. It's fresh, it's new, it's different. It's yeah, it's yeah. You know, and me being an adult, it's my type of cartoon to watch right now. It's adult talk, adult cartoon series to watch right now. And that's what makes it pretty yeah, cool. You really, really, honestly, you're really, you're really expecting the, uh, or experiencing the, the point of, uh, Omni Man. Like, yep. um, you know, it, it's, just, it's, 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 uh, you know, he has the sun here. You know, and it, it, it breaks, it really, it really gets in touch because the sun is, is, he's half human at the end of it. And Omni Man is all of, you know, his race. And he really is here to kind of, in a sense, destroy the planet. Right. In a sense. Right. Move on, move on from destroying the planet. Not only destroy it, but move on from destroying the planet. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like they to destroy multiple planets, and uh, I think that yeah, that's his biggest conflict. Like he freaking leaves Earth so fast, bro. <laughs> you see that scene? Like it's freaking 
the bur- blood burns right off his skin. Like it's just he leaves so fast that like, he just it's a lot that he he's he can't help it, man. Yeah. In Earth, it just goes out to Earth, and I, I think they give you a good aspect that like it's from a cartoon right. point of view is what I think it is. Um, is honorable. Throws it off. Agreed. Now, what do you yeah. think? Uh, all in all, then I guess we're gonna go to the grading aspect of the show. What uh, what did you grade this series, man? What do you think? You what kind of grade are you gonna give it? On a scale of A to B, one to five, one to one hundred, I would give it a, a million. Man. <laughs> a million. <laughs> all of you, uh, you heard what I said? Yeah. All the all man. It was really good. I was uh, I did. I was I was spectacle and. I didn't even know. I just jumped into an episode one, and I was like, eh. And then before you knew it, I was on end of the series. So right. I it. it. was good, man. I agree. I think I, I would go with you on that. If we had a scale, if anything, go beyond about a million. So, yeah, I would definitely. It's off the charts. I mean, it's fresh. Like I said before, it's fresh. It's new. It gives a different aspect. It gives us that adult type of cartoon that we want to see. That gives a cool. And I think I remember watching an episode and then Cindy walking in. And all of a sudden, she's all like, what are you watching? Why is it so bloody? It's a cartoon. And I'm like, that's right, man. Like, man, it's crazy. And then next thing you know, she's watching the end of it with me. And it's like, yeah, it's, it went nuts. So it's it's fresh. Yeah, you know what I mean? Man, I, watched, I watched the episode where Invincible is almost like a guy's from the line guy. And Eddie walked in, like, in this scene. Where him and like where where Invincible like like turns up his like you know where he comes back and he's like oh he's about to beat him everybody in the room yeah and I was like Eddie I don't know yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't know if he's gonna beat everybody right. and then he gets beat and he's like what happened I was like bro I don't know what's going on right <laughs> I was like I don't it's that intense like, I was like yes. bro some things you know some things you don't know man right and I like that when the show gives you that like that point of aspect where you're just like, bro, he's something's happening. Let me yep. finish this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely so. Definitely so. <laughs> well, I guess for me and you, Zach the Mac, that concludes our review on Invincible. As far as for the fans, definitely go watch the series if you haven't watched it already. For those who are on Amazon Prime, definitely look out for the, uh, this original from Amazon. It's awesome. It's fantastic. It's fresh, like we said before. For those comic book fans like we are, um, it's 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 a great story. Thus far, it's a great story. Like like I said before, I don't know it in the comic book version of it. I heard it's successful, but as far as it being implemented for me on the TV screen, I love what they're doing so far. All I can say the expectations is you know up up there. It's up there for the next season, season two and three. So that'll be looking out for that one. Let's wait for that one. Zach, the Mac, any final thoughts on the show? Yes, heck yeah, man. Man, stay tuned for me and Tony, man. We're going to give you freaking the season two review, the season three review. Stay tuned, man. We're, we're in tune. We're locked in with you guys on, I think it's Fridays, I believe. Amazon, right? They yeah, Friday? Fridays, yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be tuning in Friday. I mean, <clears throat> we'll watch that stuff with you guys day day or night. You know, we're watching it, man. So stay tuned. Watch it. It's going to be interesting. I know it is. I got a good feeling. Yep. So I love the show. Love you guys for listening. Thank you. Yeah, yes indeed. All right, guys, that's been us here at the Reject Rundown. Y'all take it easy. Have a good night. Yeah.